Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Cincinnati style chili. That's right, do not let that spaghetti fool you. This is definitely a type of chili, at least according to my friends in Cincinnati. Okay, my friends in Texas might disagree. Oh, and by the way, I'm not sure exactly how authentic this is, since I've never actually been to Cincinnati, or at least not physically. All right, spiritually, I feel like I've been there a few times. But regardless, I thought this came out great. And to get started, we're going to need a couple pounds of ground beef. And in case you have a choice, the finer the grind, the better. And what we'll do is transfer that into a nice big soup pot, and then add some tomato paste. Okay, I'm going to add an entire six ounce can. And by the way, I think I speak for all wooden spoon wielding Italian grandmothers when I say please rinse out that can with a couple tablespoons of water and add that to the pot as well. Which I did once this was on the stove, but I didn't film it. And then to that we will add some minced garlic, as well as one large diced yellow onion. At which point it's time to add our spices. So many spices. Starting with some good old fashioned chili powder, some ground cumin, some cinnamon, and of course some cayenne pepper. We will also do a little touch of allspice, as well as some ground clove, some freshly ground black pepper, which means we freshly grind it ourselves. We will also do one bay leaf, preferably from Turkey, and definitely not from California. And then we will finish up with a little bit of sugar, as well as, of course, a good amount of salt. And then as far as our wet ingredients go, we'll do some apple cider vinegar, plus a few dashes of Worcester sauce, followed by six cups of nice fresh cold water. And that is going to be it. So yes, we do have a good amount of ingredients here. But the good news is, all we have to do here is throw them all in a pot. Although before we place this on the heat, we are going to do one thing first. What we're going to do is take a potato masher, or even a large whisk if you want. And we're going to give this a good mashing slash stirring, so that we break all that meat up into small particles before this starts to cook. All right, that's what's going to give us that fine grain texture we're after. So we'll go ahead and give that a very good mix. At which point we'll place our pot over medium high heat. And we will simply wait for all this to start to boil. And while this is coming up to temperature, it is not a bad idea to take our most experienced wooden spoon and give all this an occasional stir. And while stirring at this point is mostly so we feel like we're doing something useful, it's also to break up any larger pieces of meat that we might have missed with the masher. Which I don't think I did. But we'll give it a check anyway. And then here's our game plan. As soon as this does come up to a simmer, we'll reduce our heat to medium low and simmer this, stirring occasionally, for about an hour to an hour and a half, or until it looks, feels, and tastes exactly how we want it. And of course, while this simmers, fat's going to rise to the top. And if we want, we could skim that off. Or we could do what they do in Cincinnati and not skim that off and simply stir it back into our chili. Which, if you're using grass-fed beef, is probably not a bad idea. But that's going to be up to you. I mean, you guys are after all the icky woods of your shouldn'ts and shoulds. And for the record, I decided I shouldn't, and I stirred that fat right in, since that will add richness and flavor. And by the way, this is what mine looked like after simmering for one hour. And I could have, and probably should have stopped at this point. But for whatever reason, I decided I wanted mine a little thicker. So I ended up cooking mine for about another half hour. At which point it looked like this. So at this point, that was looking good to me. Which means we have to grab a spoon and give it a taste before we serve. So I did. And decided it was perfect. And I went ahead and pulled out the bay leaf because it was right there. And that's it. We can go ahead and grab a ladle and serve this up. And right here, you're going to get a great look at that thick texture I was going for. All right, fairly dry and very pasty. And sort of looking like a nice bolognese. Speaking of which... Believe it or not, Cincinnati-style chili is served over spaghetti. That's how they do. So we will go ahead and ladle that over some plain boiled spaghetti. Oh, and pro tip here, do not undercook that pasta. Okay, we don't want al dente here. We want it fully cooked and very, very tender for this. And then if you finish this off with some diced onions and some grated orange cheddar like I'm going to, you'd be enjoying what they call in Cincinnati a four-way because of the four components. All right, if you don't do the onions and just do the cheese, we would be having what they call a three-way. And if we're being honest, this is probably the only way that one's getting checked off our bucket list. Which is fine. Still counts. But anyway, whether you're doing a three-way, a four-way, or a five-way, which I believe is with beans and or oyster crackers, I get confused on the five-way. But anyway, the point is, no matter which way you enjoy this, 
We should not. We must not. We will not twirl the fork. All right, a Cincinnati chili is eaten by cutting the spaghetti with a fork and then scooping everything up like you're eating a noodle casserole. And yes, I did try to twirl that a little bit. All right, the muscle memory takes over. But the reason you want to cut and scoop and not twirl is because due to the texture of the meat, if you twirl the pasta, that's all you're going to get in the bite. Mostly plain pasta. But by cutting and scooping, you're going to be able to get everything on the fork at once. So basically in Cincinnati, that's how people can tell who the tourists are. So do not be a twirler. Okay, that's like going to New York City and eating a slice of pizza with a fork and a knife. It is just not done. But anyway, how you should eat this aside, it really is very delicious. And I think you're going to love it if you tend to like foods from the Middle East or the Mediterranean or Greek food or Indian food. Or right, if you like those spices and flavor profiles, you're going to love this. But if you don't, you won't. Although you could still make this and just use your traditional chili spices. But happily, I really like those flavors. So I very much enjoyed this. Although if I'm being very picky, I thought this might have been a little too dry and that I reduced it maybe a little too much. So in the name of science and art, I decided to take the leftovers and add some more water and a little more tomato paste and another pinch of salt. And I went ahead and thinned this out and brought it back up to temperature. And I tried another serving with this much saucier version. So I went ahead and did everything exactly the same. And again, opted for the four-way, and then dug in, again, concentrating on not twirling, which is very, very hard for an experienced spaghetti eater. And of course, not being able to sit in front of this makes it a little challenging as well. But anyway, I eventually managed to get a couple forkfuls into my face, and believe it or not, it was pretty much the exact same experience. I mean, yes, there were more juices at the bottom of the bowl, which I guess is a good thing, but the saucier version versus that thick pasty version really was not that much different. Although, in case it matters, the video I've seen of the real stuff looks a little more similar to this saucier second version. But regardless of how thick or loose your Cincinnati-style chili is, or whether you end up enjoying a three-way, a four-way, or a five-way, I really do hope you give this unusual, but very delicious chili a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.